Hello everybody, my name is Pranas and I'm an ATPL student at Baltic Aviation Academy. Today we'll check the differences in cockpits of a Boeing 737 and an Airbus A320. So let's just go and check them out. So, to begin with, the Boeing 737 Classic has most of its instruments analog, as you can see here. But there are four electronic flight instrument displays, two on either side of the pilot. They're called the primary flight display and navigation display. So, welcome to the Airbus A320. The first thing you may notice is the glass cockpit. All the six displays in front of you. Primary flight display, navigation display, and two displays for displaying uh, all the information for systems and engines. So let's continue. The throttles on the 737 can be moved by hand as well as auto throttle. I'll demonstrate you right now. Now, contrary to the Boeing, the throttles are not moved by the autothrust system. They can only be moved by the pilot and uh, if you put them into positions like climb detent, flex or maximum continuous thrust or take off go around, the autothrust will take over, sound a few horns and the thrust levers will remain at that position. Uh, one bad thing about this, if you have a fault in the electronic system, you may have no thrust at all and you may be stuck with an engine running until you run out of fuel. So, on the 737 all of the switches are flicked like this. This is not a bad thing in it, but uh, in a situation of a real hurry, uh, just by looking at a switch may not help you determine if it is in a good position or not. Now, on the Airbus A320, as you can see, most of the switches are pushable. Why this is good? This is good because you can immediately see if a button is in a wrong position or a good position by just looking at the light. I'll demonstrate you. You can see an off light, this means bad, and no lights, this is good. Just by scanning through the overhead panel, you can see what switches are good and what are bad. On the Boeing 737, we control the aircraft mainly by yoke. You can see it. And on the Airbus, you have a joystick. The stabilizer trim, which helps us control the aircraft on the Boeing, is controlled manually by flicking a switch. The Airbus has auto trim. This means that you control the trim only when you have a computer failure. Okay, so I'll demonstrate you the auto trim. You can see it in action right now. Now, if we have a failure on the 737, we have to use a paper book called the Quick Reference Handbook. I will demonstrate you with an engine fire.
Now, I will find the page which tells me what to do in, in these circumstances. And I will do an appropriate checklist. Another thing which you have to do on the 737 after an engine failure is trim the aircraft by yourself, trim the aircraft manually. This includes the stabilizer trim, which we talked about earlier, and the rudder trim, which trims the tail to help us to compensate with the side forces coming from the engine failure. When you have a bigger failure on the Airbus, uh, besides the QRH book, you have a second way of having a checklist is here on the ECAM. I'll demonstrate to you right now. Now we have an engine one fire and we have the, all the checklist here. We just do the actions mentioned in it. Now on the Airbus, when you have an engine failure, an asymmetric thrust, uh, the aircraft trims everything by itself. Uh, we had to trim the rudder manually on the Boeing, now everything is trimmed. I can release everything, the autopilot is up and it flies straight. It handles no differently than having two engines. What makes a Boeing not really a very desirable airplane is its comfort. Uh, if you want to put your feet anywhere else than the standard positions by the pedals, uh, well, you have to improvise. I'll try. You can put your feet like this, or you can get into something like this, I don't know. And in the Boeing, if you want to stand, Bad news for you. And if you want to fill any papers, you'll just have to do it on your lap. Jesus Christ. Now, the Airbus was made with pilot comfort in mind. You even have a good place to rest your feet. And in an Airbus cockpit, you can almost stand straight. And if you need to fill any papers on the Airbus, no problem at all. You have a table. On it, of course, you can eat. So, we've just experienced how it is like to fly a 737 and an Airbus A320. I hope that it's now going to be easier for you to make a decision. Which one you like more? This was Baltic Aviation Academy. Thank you.